Hi, this is Mike here, and today I have the privilege of talking about the Step 2 and Step 3 papers. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. If there's a Step 2 and Step 3, is there a Step 1? Well, actually, Step 1 got decommissioned in 2021. So even though you probably are going to still be able to find resources for Step 1 online, is not a paper you have to take. But the Step 2 and Step 3 papers are papers that you are most likely going to be taking if you're going towards a variety of different Russell Group universities for mathematics. Uh, whether that be Cambridge, whether that be Warwick, even if it's Sheffield, a lot of different universities value this paper. It is a paper that you take at the end of your A-levels as well, unlike other admissions tests surrounding mathematics. So this is seen as one of the most difficult tests that you can take in the UK in high school to get ready for a master degree. So my very top tip in this list is make sure you go online and you look at the step support modules. There are different groups of modules and notes and practice questions that you should be working through very, very early. And when I say this, at the very least, the beginning of year 13, to really understand what is needed on the step two and step three papers. You may also find some foundational modules on there that used to correspond with the step one syllabus. If you are a little bit shaky with your maths, maybe you've had a really, really quiet summer, I would heavily suggest you go through those as well, just to make sure you're definitely up to speed. Um, not only is this really, really good at developing your awareness of what the syllabus is and what you're going to be asked, but it is also really, really useful in understanding how critical thinking is applied to these questions. None of them are multiple choice. All of them are really open-ended. We've got eight questions in each of the papers on pure maths, two questions in each on mechanics, and two questions in each on probability. And you only have to do six of those um, questions. So going through these modules, you may also quickly work out where your strengths and weaknesses lie. Um, it could be that you're mainly a pure mathematician, in which case you might want to choose only questions on pure maths. You have the option to. If you are more of an applied mathematician, you could choose the four questions on mechanics and probability and only do two on pure. You won't really be able to know that unless you start working through these modules online. And I would suggest starting working through those at the beginning of year 13. Now my second tip on this list is make sure you know your mark scheme. Make sure you know how you're going to be assessed. It's firstly really important to understand how the grades work with this and with different universities they might give varying grade sort of requirements depending on what tests you're having to take and you should be told what tests you will be taking based on the applications that you are making. Um, in the step papers, there is a number system for grades. Um, you have threes, twos, ones, and above that you have an S as well. If you're getting S's in both papers, which is really, really difficult, then you are definitely safe in getting an interview. But if you're aiming for somewhere like Cambridge, um, or you're aiming for universities like Durham, for instance, um, where you're actually putting this forward a step paper, you can at least aim for a one in any step paper that you're going for. You have to be consistent with that. What does that mean in terms of grade boundaries? That varies year by year, usually, but if you're going for an S, you want to get at least 90 out of 120 marks in each paper. If you're going for a one, you probably are gonna be aiming for like a 70 out of 120 instead uh, in each paper. You won't actually know what number you have to get over. It's very much dependent on what the top percentage of students is um, in that academic year. But as a safety net, try and aim for that 70% at the very least. That will take a little bit of time to work towards. But the only way to do that really is by knowing what your mark scheme is and what kind of grades you're going to get and what grades you need. Moving on to tip number three, what I'm gonna suggest here is make sure any workings that you do towards questions, that they are logical, clear, and are easy to read. 
in some cases, these are really obvious things I'm saying, but what you don't want to do in the middle of a paper is lose track of where you are and try to work out, for instance, how would you continue from maybe this point in the solution if you've stopped working on a particular question, you moved on to another and you've come back to it. You don't want that to happen in a paper. More importantly, Cambridge specifically really, really wants to see your method of working through a solution and often how your answer is marked is based on the logical progression that you make in an answer. So they don't necessarily have a particular mark scheme where you would get a mark for this, a mark for this point, a mark for this point. Um, you would really struggle to find that online. What they're looking for is a continuation of an answer. How do you critically progress forward from what you know into what you don't know? That is really what they're looking for and that's what they're looking for in the students that go to university. Moving on to my next tip, what I'm going to heavily suggest is that when you are writing out your solutions to questions, that they are clear, logical, and legible. Those are really important qualities in a question, not only for you to be able to keep track of actually how you are answering a question, um, but it's also really important for universities like Cambridge to see what your thought processes are. What you might find really interesting about a paper like this is that if you try to find ex exam marks for this, where are they going to be allocated, you're going to really struggle. You are probably going to mostly find solutions to questions. And the reason why that's the case is because in some cases there are multiple ways of actually solving these questions. So it would be pretty unfair to say actually that you only get a mark here for doing something very specific that isn't entirely necessary to get into the answer. Cambridge really want to be able to see you develop your critical thinking skills in an argument, hence why a lot of these questions are overended, and they often want that in their students as well, which is really, really key. If you're in the early stages of getting ready for your step papers, you may want to look at a few resources like advanced problems in pure mathematics or advanced problems in mathematics that are provided by the step board. And these I highly recommend simply because they go over practice questions that aren't necessarily easy to find in these papers and they provide written out solutions for how you should actually express your answer. It's a little bit of a different trick to learn in comparison to a business test but the earlier you start doing this, the better. So make sure that it is clear, it is legible, and it can be easily communicated to another person reading your answer. Tip number four is a tip that I've been giving to lots of different admissions test videos, is make sure that you take your step papers under timed conditions. These are really long papers, mind, they're three hours each, but the more practice papers you go through, the better you will be and the more quickly you will develop your preferred exam technique. It's not going to be the same for absolutely everyone going into this exam. This is also given the fact that you can choose any six questions you like. There are no compulsory questions. But if you want to have an idea as to how you might ta start tackling your exam, I would usually start with question number one, which statistically has been the easiest questions or the most attempted questions by students to take in examiner's reports, which I heavily recommend you also read after you've done these practice papers, just to see what other students have gone for in terms of questions. You will also want to make sure as well that you are marking the questions that you do. And at first I'd recommend that maybe you start off trying to do three questions very solidly. There are no fast questions in these papers. They are long, they take a lot of thinking, and you often want to answer, you know, a question and which leads on to something else. So everything that you are working towards in the middle of a question has merit and counts. Once you actually have gotten your marks, you might want to focus more a little bit on time management with this one, rather than what are your strengths and weaknesses. However, in terms of determining actually what your strengths and weaknesses are, you might want to ask yourself, what questions didn't I do because they looked too tough? And when you answer that question, 
you might be more so inclined to focus your revision on questions that you didn't necessarily want to cover. But what we're aiming for with these practice tests is making sure that you can answer ideally uh, four or five questions in full, ultimately, very full through. This is if you want to actually go to universities like Cambridge. You really want to be aiming for these top grades, so make sure you put in the recommended time. And my final point in this video that I really want to make is you cannot benefit more than working one-on-one -on -one with a step tutor. At the Profs, we are very, very fortunate to house lots of tutors that help in STEP, that help in the MAT, that help in the TMUA, that help in the PAT, as well as many other admissions tests. And if you're wondering whether really that we can help you or not, well, let the statistics speak for themselves. 95% of our students that have been applied to university got either their first or second choices. And if we're just focusing on Oxbridge candidates, 55% of the people that we worked with have managed to land in universities like Cambridge also having to take these admissions tests. That is greater than three times the national average. So if you're interested in hearing a little bit more about how you can prepare for the step two and step three exams, do not hesitate to contact us using the information on screen right now. And just in case we don't hear from you anytime soon, best of luck with your application.